All right. So hello, everyone. I see we're having some people start uh, filing into the room here. Thank you again for joining us. Um, this is our first ever Brandeis Alumni Children's Book Reading Event. Uh, my name is Daniel Larson. And I'm a member of the Alumni Relations Team. And on behalf of uh, Brandeis University's Alumni Relations Team, welcome. Uh, we are really pleased to be joined by alumni author Andrew Sussner, MA96, who will be reading her book, Shelfy Girl. Uh, Anne Marie is an author and illustrator of a series of Yiddish inspired books. Um, picture books including Schmutzy Girl, Nashi Boy, Schlupfy Girl, Fetchy Boy, Klutzy Boy, and Hanukkah with Nashi Boy and Friends. Her company, Matzah Ball Books, was created to foster love for and pride in Yiddish and all things Jewish and, Jewish and the next generation of children. Disaster tours annually, reading, educating, and entertaining thousands of kids throughout North America. Ms. Astner holds a BA in psychology from the University of California, Santa Barbara, and an MA in psychology, psychology from Brandeis University. She's an alumna of the Jewish Federation Master's Class in Entertainment, and she lives in California. So Anne-Marie, thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, after the book reading, we'll have an opportunity to ask Anne-Marie some questions. We may even sneak in another story as well. So one final note of housekeeping is that this webinar is being recorded. It will be shared online afterwards, so feels, please feel free to share that with others who you know who may be interested. And with that, I will pass it off to Anne-Marie. Thank you, Daniel, for the warm introduction. I'm very happy to be here and be helping to launch this series. I'm going to share my screen briefly so you can see um, the books we'll be referring to. Um, Okay. Daniel, give me the thumbs up if you can actually see my screen. Yeah, we can see it. Okay, perfect. So today we're going to be reading from Schliffy Girl, this book here. Um, it's actually the third book to come out in the series. And I don't know if you can see if her eyes are open or, or closed, but she's meant to be sleeping, kind of yawning, because Schliff is to sleep or to be tired, is to is to sleep in Yiddish. So all of these books were inspired by, by Yiddish. Each of the characters have a Yiddish name so we could help learn the words. Like Nashi Boy, can you see what he has in his hand? So Nashi Boy has a cookie in his hand, he's got chubby cheeks, he's always eating. And Schmutzy Girl, the first book in the series, and she's a very good friend of Schliffy Girl. Um, she can see how she's got some schmutz on her punum, she has some dirt on her face, so she's she gets into lots of messes. And Kvechi Boy, I don't know if you can see, he looks, looks pretty not so thrilled with life. So he's upset and he, and he complains all the time. He kvetches and complains all the time. And he complains a lot about Schliffy Girl. So we'll hear that in a moment. And we have Klutzy Boy up on his cheek. He's got a Band-Aid. And what you can't see here, let me see if I can find it in the book, is that, see here, not only is a Band-Aid on his cheek, he also has a cast on his leg. He's so clumsy, he's always getting, um, he's getting injured. So those are some of the friends that are gonna appear in Schliffy Girl's book. I have a, Super big size one, so it'll be fun to be able to see the pictures. And there's one other character who's in Schliffy Girl's book, whose book is not out yet. So let me see if I can show that to you for a second. Oh, so this is Kibitzy Girl. You see how Kibitzy Girl's mouth is kind of open? Because she's always kibitzing or joking around. So those are the characters. Um, for this story, so let me um, get started with, with the Schliffy Girl story. So for those of you, who, those who don't know, um, Yiddish is a language spoken by Jews all over the world, but it's a language made by Jews. It's a uniquely Jewish language and some of the words are still around and they're even embedded into English and they're fun and silly, silly words. So, and they really sound like me, like schliffy, oh, I'm so schliffy, I want to go to sleep. And that's exactly what she loves to do. So let's, let's visit schliffy girl. Let me get situated so you can see. So 
Nap time, of course, is Schlippy Girl's favorite time of the day. But for Schlippy Girl, nap time is almost all the time. Does anybody know anyone like that? I'm like that. I need to take a nap almost every day. I make my kids take a nap just so I can take a nap. Eating, reading, and playing don't stop Schliffy Girl from taking a snooze. She can sleep pretty much anywhere and anytime. You can see she's even sleeping while she's playing baseball. Schliffy Girl's favorite thing to do is to have slumber parties with her friends. See, there's Schmutzy Girl with her schmutz on her ponum and Kibitzy Girl getting all ready to tell some jokes and kibitz around. Last weekend, Schliffy Girl invited Kibitzy Girl and Schmutzy Girl to sleep over. Kibitzy Girl, who loves to joke around, kept Schmutzy Girl awake most of the night. But Schliffy Girl managed to fall asleep just fine. Sometimes Schliffy Girl's love for sleep gets her into trouble. When she naps on the bus, Schliffy Girl misses her stop. Uh-oh, said Schliffy Girl when she woke up. It's a long walk home from here. When she falls asleep in class, Schliffy Girl gets scolded. Schliffy Girl, how can you learn when you're always sleeping? Asked her teacher. And look at her paper. She's not writing much of anything, is she? When she schliffs during recess, sometimes Schliffy Girl gets hurt. Ow, she cried as Klutzy Boy tripped over her. Oops, I should have looked, said Klutzy Boy. But people usually aren't sleeping in the middle of the playground. Here we go with Fetchy. Schliffy Girl's biggest problem is her good friend, Fetchy Boy. Fetchy Boy always complains about how much Schliffy Girl sleeps. Sleep, sleep, sleep. All you do is sleep, said Quetchy Boy. Doesn't sound very happy, does he? Why does it bother you so much that I love to sleep? Why do you always complain about it, asked Schliffy Girl. Schliffy Girl, you're no fun to hang out with because you're always sleeping. You even fell asleep at my birthday party, said Quetchy Boy remembering back. I'm sorry, Kvetchy boy, said Schliffy girl. I didn't mean to hurt your feelings. It's not just that, said Kvetchy boy. I'm a little worried. I don't know anyone other than my Bubby and Zadie who sleep so much. Does anybody else have Bubby and Zadies? Grandma and Grandpa? I love the words Bubby and Zadie. In fact, I'll show you after this. The, the next book coming out is called Bubby and Zadie. Oh, sorry, this is a big one. Let me move so I can, you can see it. The next day, Schliffy Girl's mother took her to the doctor to make sure nothing was the matter. Even at the doctor, she's asleep. Everything seems to be all right, said the doctor. Maybe Schliffy Girl is growing and needs extra rest. Or maybe she just likes to sleep. But this much sleep? She sleeps all the time, said Schliffy Girl's mom. Well, there's a time and place for most everything. Maybe Schliffy Girl could try sleeping only when she's really tired. Probably nap time and night time are enough. With lots of effort, Schliffy Girl stopped napping on the bus and she no longer misses her stop. She stops sleeping in class and she learns a lot more. Look, you can even see she can write Schliffy Girl now. And she stops sleeping during recess and she no longer gets hurt. Now Schliffy Girl saves her naps for nap time. Schliffy Girl still loves to sleep and can't wait until her next slumber party. 
See, she's counting down. Do you sometimes count down to your next exciting event and mark it on the calendar? I know I sure do. I was counting down till today. Very excited to read to you. And Schliffy Girl is happiest of all when each day comes to an end and she can finally snuggle under the covers, turn out the light and say, good night. I know for you back on the East Coast, it's very close to your bedtime. So hopefully you'll have a good schliff tonight. Thank you. Thank you so much, Anne-Marie. Uh, if anybody has any questions, please feel free to ask them in the Q&A section and we'll have Anne-Marie answer any questions from any readers or their parents. Uh, in, the in the meantime, can I show them the, um, the Booby and Zadie book cover that I just promised them? Go for it. All right, so I'll share. I actually go through here. So here's the whole set. So the ones I showed you the actual, the actual books for. Oh, did I just lose you? Did I lose you? Yeah, we don't see your screen, Emory. Does that work? Yeah, we do. But do you see all of my chaos or you just see? Yeah, we see your books. Okay. Um, so these are the ones that I showed you that are already out, but then in, you can see that there are Schleppy Boy. He's a good friend of Klutzy Boy's. He, he first comes out in Klutzy Boy's book, but Schleppy Boy loves to schlep and carry and bring his whole life wherever he's going. And, and Kibitsy Girl, who you just met, her book's ready to go. It's not out yet, but she comes, she, her debut is in Schliffy Girl's book. And then the Booby and Zadie, the grand, grandma and grandpa book, is their first book featuring grown up characters. I have some questions for you coming in, Emery. Oh, great. All right. So um, what inspired you to start writing the Matzo Ball books and, and how old were you when you first started writing? Oh, two questions. Well, I've been writing for as long as I can remember. My first like real recollection of Hi having this be a regular practice, maybe not daily, but very often. So I was about 12 and my dad gave me a Judy Bloom diary and inside the diary, there'd be quotes from her different books on each page and it was just a very fun diary to, to fill in. So I, I started keeping a diary back then and I've been doing it off and on ever since. So that was really my first, okay, now writing is fun to do as opposed to something somebody else told me, told me to do. And then in terms of these books, why I wrote them, my booby, my personal grandma, she spoke fluent Yiddish. And then my mom understands Yiddish, but can't really speak. And I know about 50 words. So the thought was, okay, what are my kids gonna know? Or what's the next generation going to, going to know with that level of dilution? So I said, okay, well, what can I do? I can at least kind of keep the 50 words I know alive. And other people have too, like Seinfeld uses them all the time or other, a lot of comedians use them. And many of these words have integrated into English, but this is, a a way to get them these words familiar to very young kids, like from a very early age. And I had the series, I don't know if you guys know this series, the Little Miss and Mr. Men book series. And I thought it was so much fun, including this one, it's called Little Miss Fun, but there's Mr. Happy and Little Miss Giggles. And I thought, oh, wouldn't it be great to do characters like that and help the next generation have a fun, positive, silly reference for these, for these Yiddish words. And that's where it came from. That's so great. We have a question here from Danielle. Uh, Danielle's asking, what made you decide in your layout to put the text of the book underneath the pictures as opposed to side by side? Oh, Danielle, I've never thought of putting it side by side. I think with so many other books I've read, like picture books, the text is almost always underneath the picture or kind of 
on top of the picture even. It didn't occur to me to do it side to side, but it's a, it's a nice idea. We have a question here from Ilana. Ilana's asking, what is the Bubby and Zadie book about? Thank you in advance. So it's the best book right now because it's the newest one. So um, I'm a little bit fickle and I always love the newest one the most for the day. And then I get back to loving everybody equally. It's kind of like the newborn baby. It's the one that needs the most attention. So it gets it. So the Bubby and Zadie book, the, the kids actually, all these kids are kind of cousins. So they, a bunch of them go to Booby and Zadie's house to, for a visit. And they're doing all their stuff. And like Nashi Boy is eating everything. And Shilfi Girl is sleeping in the middle of the floor. And Schmutzy Girl is making art and has her paint everywhere. And Klutzy Boy is playing baseball and breaking windows. They're all doing exactly who they are, right? And Kfetchy Boy right, is hanging out with Booby and Zadie. And every time Booby and Zadie see like one of the other kids, they say something really nice like, like, Klutzy Boy, you're so helpful. And Klutzy Boy's like, huh, how's he helpful? All he's doing is cleaning up his own mess. Like, he broke it, he's cleaning it up. That's not being helpful. Or they think that Schliffy Girl is so independent and Klutzy Boy's like, she's not independent, she just sleeps everywhere. Or, that's not, that's not independence, that's like, that's just Schliffing. And so basically, Bubby and Zadie find the good in everything. They even say to Kfetchy boy, they, they say, oh, Kfetchy boy, you're so observant. Like, you, you, you get everything. You see everything that's going on. He's like, I'm not being observant. I'm Kfetching. And really, what's, what's going on, the moral of the story is that, and that comes from Bubby and Zadie, is that when you love someone, you look for the good. They're not paying attention to Kvetchy boys kvetching, they're thinking how smart he is that he notices stuff. They're not paying attention to Schliffy girl sleeping. They're thinking, oh, she knows her own head. She's so independent. She's willing to do what she thinks is right, even if nobody else does. Um, Schmutzy girl, they don't think, oh, she's so messy. They think she's so enthusiastic. She's so excited. She can't wait to like, just take life by both, by both hands. It's, they look for the good. And that's really the message is that particularly grandparents with their grandkids is that is that they, they see the good and that changes the grandkids. And I know for my kids, they're having a really hard time right now because we can't go see their Bubby and Zadie. And so that's why I really want to get this book out because as there's a warmth and a building of the next generation that really comes from grandparents to, to their grandkids. And that's what that book's about. But you get lots of the kids in it, lots of the characters. Thank you for the question. Thanks, Alana. Got a quite another question here is, um, Emery, do you do the illustrations for the books as well as writing them? I do. So if they're not good, I don't want to hear about it. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I do, and actually you'll see a big difference. Like for the ones that have come out already, like Schmutzy Girl, you can see in her book, they're pretty, they're pretty basic. This was the first book to come out. And they're simpler and they don't have quite as much detail. Close, but not quite as much. And then the last book to actually be published, like I said, Schleppy Boy, Kibitzy Girl, and Bobby and Zadie are ready to go to press. They just haven't gone yet. So their art's actually really good. But you could see that the, the Hanukkah book was the last one to come out. And there's more, there's more detail in the pictures. I got, I got better as, as I went along, which happens with a lot of us with things, right? Where we, we get better as, as we do it. But the story here is that I didn't want to do the illustrations. I'm a writer, I don't draw. And I worked with a couple of illustrators who didn't quite do the illustrations the way I wanted them done or didn't finish them on time. And when I started out, honestly, I didn't even have a budget for any of it anyway. So people are kind of doing me, doing me favors. And my husband said to me, he said, why don't you just do them? How tough can it be? And I was like, well, it looks pretty tough. <laughs> and he said, you know what you like. These are kids' books. Whatever you can draw will, will at least be accessible and nice for them to look at because you'll probably draw more or less like a kid. And he's, he was right. But really, he, he pushed me to do it. And later, years, years later, I found out that, that Mel Brooks apparently didn't want to write the Am I saying this right? I don't want to be the music to the producers. He wrote the words, but didn't want to write the music. And it was his wife who pushed him 
um, who pushed him to, to write the music. She said, you're the only one who knows what you want. And there's an element of, I guess I was the one who knew what I wanted. And I started and I took a chance and was patient with myself too, knowing that it got, it got better as I went. That's so great, Emery. Uh, we just had a comment here from Enid. Enid says, I don't have a question, but I just wanted to say how delighted I am that this is available. I have a two-year-old grandson who now knows the word schmutz because I'll use it with him when I'm with him. I'll be sure to get these for him. That's from Enid. <laughs> Thanks, Enid. I'm so glad. That's exactly, exactly why, I, why I made the books. Thank you. You made my day. Now, Emery, um, um, do we want to see if anybody wants to hear another story, if anybody's interested? Yes, for sure, for sure. Maybe, maybe you could ask them, and, and let's, let's do a boy book, because we just did a girl one. Okay, do folks want to see or uh, hear another story? Should we do, uh, should we do Klutzy Boy? Oh, I'd love to. I would love to. Klutzy Boy is a lot of fun because it's when we get to meet Schleppy Boy. So here's Klutzy Boy. Oh, I'm sorry. I have to stop sharing my screen. Okay. Of course, he looks like he's at the nurse's office at school, right? <laughs> Klutzy boy is the clumsiest kid on the block. If there's something to spill, oh no, I'm all wet. Something to break. Oops, I didn't mean to hit the window. or an injury to be had. Ow, my leg hurts. Just leave it to Klutzy Boy. Every day, Klutzy Boy walks home from school with Schleppy Boy. Schleppy, Schleppy Boy always has a lot to carry, but one day he had even more than usual since it had been his turn for show and tell. Klutzy Boy, would you mind carrying my fishbowl? asked Schleppy Boy. I just have too much to carry. I can't schlep it all. Have you ever felt like that? You just can't schlep it all? Of course, said Klutzy Boy. Sorry. He was happy to help. Schleppy Boy handed Klutzy Boy the bowl and said, be sure to be careful. As soon as the words left Schleppy Boy's mouth, the fishbowl hit the ground with a smash. Oh no, said Klutzy Boy. It slipped right out of my hands. I didn't mean to. Klutzy Boy, said Schleppy Boy angrily. You are so, so, so klutzy. Upset. Schleppy Boy left Klutzy Boy to deal with the mess and to walk home alone. That's not very nice. <laughs> Must have been really upset. The next day at school, Klutzy Boy's other friends could tell something was the matter. Fetchy Boy, here he comes again, who never misses an opportunity to complain, advised, maybe if you complain about your problem, you might feel better. But Klutzy Boy was in no mood to fetch. It wouldn't help him be less clumsy. Right. Nashi Boy, who loves to eat, said, maybe you need a snack. Do you want one of my cookies? But Klutzy Boy knew that noshing wouldn't make him less klutzy. Schliffy Girl, who is always sleepy, suggested, Maybe you need a nap. Oh, it always helps me make 
It always makes me feel better. Klutzy Boy just shook his head. He knew that schliffing wouldn't cure his clumsiness. Well, Klutzy Boy, said Schliffy Girl, if whatever is bothering you can't be fixed with a schliff, a nosh, or a kvetch, what could possibly be the problem? Schliffy Girl, answered Klutzy Boy, I am the klutziest kid in the whole wide world. I even dropped Schleppy Boy's fishbowl. That's it? That's why you're so upset? asked Schliffy Girl between yawns. Uh, yes, said Klutzy Boy, looking confused. Klutzy Boy, all you have to do is pay a little more attention to what you're doing and take your time, said Schliffy Girl. You'll see, you'll be a lot less clumsy. At first, Klutzy Boy didn't believe that being less klutzy could be that easy. But he gave it a try, and soon Klutzy Boy spilled a lot less, broke fewer things, like the window's okay, and got hurt less often. Look, his leg even got better. No band-aid. A little extra time and attention left Klutzy Boy a lot less klutzy. Klutzy Boy even brought Schleppy Boy a new fishbowl without dropping it. Look what's Schleppy Boy carrying now. Is that basketballs, a cooler, water, a backpack? He's prepared. Let's put it that way. Sometimes when Klutzy Boy is excited, oops, sorry. Sometimes when Klutzy Boy is excited, or in a hurry, or forgets to pay attention to what he is doing. Oops! Boing. Klutzy Boy is reminded that he still can be a little klutzy, just like most everyone else. Right? Slowing down made him a lot less klutzy. I guess Schliffy, even though she sleeps all the time, has some good advice. Thanks so much, Anne-Marie. Those stories were really, really great. Thank you. Well, the I, pleasure was all mine. I, I love Brandeis. It was one of the best years of my life, and, and I love being part of the Brandeis extended family. We really, we really appreciate that a lot. And thank you to everyone uh, for joining us this, uh, this evening, whether you're on the East Coast here, where it might be time for some schluffing, uh, or if you're anywhere else uh, across the country, around the world. Uh, any uh, final thoughts from you, Anne-Marie? Um, no, it's just been a real thrill to be able to launch it. And anyone who wants to reach out to me, please, go, you can go to matzaballbooks.com and reach out through there, or at matzaballbooks on Instagram. And I look forward to hearing from you. Thanks, Anne-Marie. Oh, and, and we, there's a, there is a discount, there's a checkout code for my Brandeis family. Um, if you put Brandeis in all caps at, at the checkout, there's a, there's a discount for Brandeisians. <laughs> as you can see from the slide that's up on your screen now, you can also see all upcoming virtual alumni events at alumni.brandeis.edu slash events, or you can be sure to follow us on social media. That's it from all of us, and thanks again to Anne-Marie. Thank you, Daniel. All right. Have a good night, everyone. Bye. Gay schluffen. <laughs>